So it's 2024 and we're already past the so-called release window for Sandbox, which was meant to be within 2023. <laughs> oh shit. This is due to an old statement that Gary had mentioned back in 2022 within the Sandbox Discord. Now, there has been a ton, and I mean a ton of updates and changes that have actually taken place over the last year or so, which some of them have been updates to the Source 2 Filmmaker, a part of the Sandbox Editor tools that incorporate Face Punch's system, Asset.Party, making it a lot more easier for creatives and animators to add assets, models, and more with ease to game menus that give your special game a bit more of a proper introduction leading into the game that you spend time creating, to even the absolute ginormous wave of invite keys that were slowly being pushed out to the community and those interested to get their hands on Sandbox incredibly early within its development. And finally, to the removal of the old entity system that was built into Sandbox since the switch to Source 2, an introduction to the new scene system, which has been in development for now over four months. While 2024 has just started, while both me and many other people within the community are definitely waiting to see what Face Punch is going to post for the next blog post, I've noticed that there has been a couple of things that have been getting shown around by some of the Face Punch team that have been incredibly interesting. What has been shown was some of these new editor tools. But aside from these editor tools, what really caught my interest specifically, majority of these were all custom made. Yep, you've heard that right. These are all custom made tools that real people made so that they can work on their game in a more efficient way. Now, I know you're gonna say, why does this even matter? Well, think of it this way. Sailbox itself is a game engine that's completely modified at this point due to all the changes that have been going on. While it does double as a user-generated content platform like Fortnite or Roblox, there's a lot more under the hood that allows you, the creator, modder, or developer, to create awesome things for the game. And that includes, well, of course, its tools. Sandbox's editor is an incredibly powerful tool that allows you to view your animations for characters, edit textures for your map, create your game scene with the new scene system, and also create pre-rendered animated cutscenes for your game if you wanted to, and much more. But the scene system is only half of the fun. I've covered in this video shown here as to why Sandbox itself can stand out from the rest and also including a wonderfully summarized explanation of how truly powerful the system is with the help of Carson, a member of the Sandbox community. To get more into detail, let's actually talk about the editor project itself. And according to the documentation, creating an editor project lets you do a few special things, such as creating editor tools, custom inspectors for your components and game resources, control widgets, editor docs, or creating editor apps. Next, to some of the editor apps is, editor apps are apps that run in the editor. Examples of editor apps are the shadow graph, map editor, and model editor. And finally, the editor tools. With editor tools, you can create your own to help you create your game. Your tool needs to be created in an editor project. Now, with all the technicalities that I just described, what actually is the point of this and why would would it be worth caring about this and why is it so incredibly powerful? What if you're giving the opportunity to actually download a custom tool that basically solves whatever problem you're faced with since the tools may not already exist in the editor? This is where it can get pretty crazy depending on who actually hears this type of information. So let's give some proper examples to start with. Back Scratch, one of the lovely devs and mappers a part of the Facebook Sandbox team, decided to show off a new tool he created to utilize for other mappers when it comes to adding assets in a map by allowing you to snap them to a grid, making it a lot more easier and quicker to set up certain places or areas of a map with ease and for personal design, or a terrain system that allows you to create terrain and paint the terrain very quickly, or even help artists like Dan Dude, which works on the clothes for Terry and more as he can expect the clothing and test on how they will look on Terry before releasing it in the game, or whatever this is. Even taking a quote from Max, the lead 3D animation and artist on the game, this actually seems like what Gary has been wanting to do since the beginning of the game's inception, quoting Gary saying, being able to extend and add to tools just as easily as you can make your game yourself. All in all, how does this make Sandbox any more powerful than it already is possibly starting to become? Well, not only does the scene system make the game incredibly fast and a lot more easier to create iterations for your game or even update your game, but allows you to not have to worry since it's not entirely code-based. These custom editor tools shown only scratch the surface of what others can possibly do once they get their hands onto it. If you're interested in wanting to know more about Sandbox, then definitely check out this video right here on screen, which currently talks about what's going on with the game and more. Thanks for watching.